User cases are available for any load. There are 150 user cases available. Keep in mind that the program has no idea of the load category for user cases, so it just assumes it to be occasional, and you need to be careful in how that's combined. It's possible to use user cases if there are insufficient load cases of other types available, and code and non-code combinations have to be created manually to handle these correctly. A cut short, which is often referred to as a cold spring or a cold pull, is the process of cutting short the pipe by a small amount so as to distribute the loads evenly between the hot and cold conditions. Commonly used in power generation where very long, very hot main steam lines have a cold spring applied. The idea is that it will protect the sensitive turbine nozzles by reducing the load on them in the hot condition. So the pipe has a section removed from it, usually about half of the expected expansion. And the two ends are then pulled together and welded together. And this pre-stresses the pipe in the cold condition. The reaction loads are then more evenly distributed. And this concept can only be applied to the equipment and support reactions, but it's not allowed to be applied to reduce pipe stress results. In all of the ASME B31 piping codes, it actually explicitly says that the effect of cold spring should not be taken into account when calculating the expansion stresses. And this is attributed to the fact that the B31 expansion stress is already assumed yielding since the allowable stress range can reach 2.5 times your SH value. Under yielding conditions, any initial stresses due to the cold spring are expected to dissipate and a permanent plastic deformation will take place. And this is why when you disconnect the pipe a few years later, that you'll see that there's a lack of any spring forces that did exist at cold conditions during construction. Using the insert extra data menu, we can add a cut short to the to any pipe point. The trick is to be careful on how you account for the cut short in the reaction loads, but not in the pipe stresses. If we included it with the thermal cases, the T cases, then it would automatically be included with both. So instead we choose to assign the cut short as a user case, a U case. So in our code combinations, we can delete the sustain plus U1 case from the list so that we don't consider the cut short in our code stress results. And in the non-code combinations, we can add the U1 with the gravity load case, which is the real code condition, and that's how we can check our support forces and nozzle reactions. A concentrated force and moment can be added to any node and assigned to a load case using the insert extra data menu. If it's combined with a load case, it would automatically be added in with it. A user case, again, would require to be manually combined using load combinations. And the value can be displayed on the screen using the show ribbon. And also there's a tab in the input grid available to review or modify these entered values. It's possible to enter a value of force and moment to a range of load cases, and they can be adjusted from this grid. The HydroTest load allows the user to define the test fluid and pressure and temperature to be used for the test. For V313 code, there's a test procedure that exists, and the pressure and temperature cases can be updated depending on the factors selected in another dialog. In the static analysis sets dialog, a new set is required for the HydroTest case and will produce the HydroTest code combinations. Only one pressure and temperature case is allowed in each HydroTest uh, analysis set. When running a hydro test analysis, all hangers are considered to be still locked. Autopipe automatically converts all designed and undesigned spring and constant hangers to rigid V-stops to simulate these locked hangers, and gravity pressure and thermal loads are combined to simulate the hydro test loads. Imposed support displacements can be applied in the direction of a support using the insert extra data menu as well. The support stiffness will be taken into account and the displacement can only occur if there is a restraint stiffness available in that direction. The displacement is assigned to a load case when applied and will be automatically added in. A user case would require again for this to be manually combined. The value can be displayed on the screen using the show ribbon. And again, there's a tab in the input grid to review or modify these entered values. A large number of support displacements can be imported using an Excel spreadsheet in the format shown here. And there is an example of this in the help and program directories to guide you. This concludes the presentation portion of the static analysis and loads autopipe training class. In the next video, we will look at a workbook example in the program. Thank you.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.